Greece sees it as a vital part of the safety of its people. That was the assessment of Vladimir Putin as he spoke at the media conference at the BRICS summit in China. Well, let's now cross live to RT's Kate Partridge, who's in the Chinese city of Xiamen for us, where the BRICS summit took place. Uh, Kate, uh, what were the main points that President Putin brought up in the press conference? Well, the main point, so one of the main points that he talked about was obviously, in light of the current climate, was on North Korea. And he drew a parallel here between North Korea, between Iraq and Libya, where regime change was imposed upon them. And he said that North Korea's fear, that threat of regime change, is why North Korea won't be giving up on its nuclear tests. Everyone remembers what happened to Iraq and Saddam Hussein. He stopped the production of weapons of mass destruction. Regardless, under the pretext of searching for those weapons, Saddam himself was destroyed, alongside his family members. And they remember that in North Korea. Do you think that just because of sanctions, North Korea will forget its policy of creating weapons of mass destruction? Russia condemns those North Korean actions. We think they are a provocation. North Koreans, as I told one of my colleagues yesterday, would rather eat grass than give up on their nuclear program, unless they feel safe. Well, President Putin also said that the US policy on North Korea doesn't make any sense. And he said that it's absolutely absurd to put Russia and North Korea on the same sanctions list and then ask Moscow to help impose sanctions on Pyongyang. It's absurd to put Russia on the same sanctions list alongside North Korea and then ask us to help impose sanctions against North Korea. The sanctions regime has hit a wall. It is not effective. But it is also to do with the humanitarian side of things. No matter what we do to North Korea, North Korea's actions will not change, but millions of people will suffer. Well, President Putin, as he said there, sanctions don't make any sense. And to him and to the Chinese president as well, they see that the way forward is by negotiation, is by resuming diplomacy as the only resolution to the conflict on the Korean Peninsula. OK, that's RT's Kate Partridge in Sherman. Thanks for that, Kate. Now, with the crisis on the Korean Peninsula continuing to escalate, the U.S. envoy to the United Nations says diplomacy is failing with North Korea after Pyongyang conducted its largest ever nuclear test on Sunday. The U.N. Security Council met for urgent talks following North Korea's announcement that it had conducted a controlled hydrogen bomb explosion, the impact of which triggered an earthquake in the region. But so far, it seems the United Nations has been unable to come up with an alternative or new new solution for the crisis. Enough is enough. I think enough is enough. The stakes could not be higher. The urgency is now. Time is short. Action is required. Our country's patience is not unlimited. The policy of strategic patience is over. War is never something the United States wants. The United States does not seek conflict. Only the strongest sanctions will enable us to resolve this problem through diplomacy. All of our counterparts need to impose the sanctions. We will defend our allies and our territory. The United States is prepared to use the full range of our capabilities to defend ourselves and our allies. RT's Nadira Tudor explores what other options are on the table for Donald Trump. The U.S. and North Korea are stuck in a behavioral rut. Neither seem willing to back down, and it looks so bad you might think a third world war was imminent. But surely no one wants that. So how does the world tackle North Korea? What are the options? Well, option number one, Twitter war. President Trump has been dropping Twitter bombs on pretty every occasion, saying Pyongyang is looking for trouble and threatening locked and loaded military solutions. And South Korea, and I should point out that it's a US ally, is caught in the rhetorical crossfire. The question is, how effective are these Twitter bombs? There's no reaction, except from Kim parading more of his ballistic missiles and even saying he now has a hydrogen bomb. On to the next strategy option, number two trade wars and sanctions. The U.S. and U.N. Security Council have hit North Korea with sanctions over and over again since 2006. And guess what? They don't seem to care. And to add more pressure, the U.S. has been hinting at ceasing all trade with any country that continues to do business with them. The United States will look at every country that does business with North Korea as a country that is giving aid to their reckless and dangerous nuclear intentions. But how realistic would this be? 
That means that approximately 80 countries would be affected, and that's not to mention the economic consequences for the U.S. itself. Option three. The scariest of all, which still exists, actual all-out war. The U.S. are the only party openly threatening a military response at the moment, and it looks like they could find themselves alone in this fight. Other leaders have been clear about not wanting to go down this road. I have to answer no to that. I do not see a military solution for North Korea. I cannot accept it. America's closest ally, the UK, is saying that even a conventional war could potentially wipe out the Korean peninsula. We keep hearing about the need for diplomatic solutions, yet we hardly see any progress to resolve the deadlock. So, where are we now? Back at the beginning, it seems. But surely there should be no limit on diplomatic efforts. Nadira Tudor, RT.